What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Jogger Joe, ready to go with What the Wrestling, the weekly wrestling podcast in which I review Raw and SmackDown and I tell you which one I thought was better for the week. Now, this week, I'm just going to do a basic up and down of the show. I'm going to tell you about each segment and that's going to be the end of it. So, we're going to get started with Raw real quick like. The show, uh, it started with... Really, it was like a promo of Braun Strowman putting the absolute beat down on Roman Reigns, and it was amazing, and everyone still loved it to this week, and uh, then Braun Strowman comes out, he says, I put him in the hospital, he's not going to be here this week, screw you, or not really screw you, but that's basically how it was, how it went down, and while we're on the subject of Roman Reigns, can I just say, uh, rest in peace to his brother Rosie, who passed away recently, um, whether you like him, whether you like Roman Reigns or not, you do have to respect the fact that his family has been doing this for a lot of years. And honestly, he's going to grow into greatness just like his family. Or at least we hope so. Either way, we're getting back to it. Braun Strowman came out and said that he wants more competition because, Braun, because Roman Reigns is crap. Angle comes out and says, you know what? I've given Roman Reigns exactly what he wants. And I gave him a match. Against you at payback, and everybody went, no, screw that, screw that, and screw you. But, oh well, um, Braun was like, screw that, I want competition tonight. And Angle was like, no, you're not going to get competition tonight, because I ought to uh, suspend you for what you did, but I'm not going to. Just ha take the night off, because take the night off. And he was like, no, I'm not going to. Do what, give me, give me uh, competition or else. He was like, or else what? So he walks off. And I really thought that this was good because it was like, okay, Braun, you're looking like a freaking monster. What's about to happen? We're going to get into what, what he does later, but we're not going to say it. I'm going to try to go in order as much as I can. First match of the night, Samoa Joe versus Chris Jericho with Seth Rollins on the commentary, on the commentary table. And speaking of the commentary table, David Otonga will not be here for the foreseeable weeks. Booker T is still again. I think it should be a permanent fix because I personally like Booker T over David, but that's just me. Um, but back to the match, Samoa Joe, it was, it was a good match. It was a really good match. Chris Jericho still looking like a freaking master being able to do these things uh, at his age. And like an old father, he's still able to do things like the son would be able to do. And sadly, Chris Jericho lost. He wasn't able to uh, pick up the win, but I think it was really good. I thought the whole uh, the whole thing where it was like, oh, you know, uh, she have this moment where I'm gonna try to where I'm gonna try to get out of the coquito clutch and it didn't work. I just thought it was really good um, all the way around. Then afterwards, uh, Samoa Joe basically said, you know, I'm gonna give you, uh, I'm gonna do to you what you did to Stephanie and Triple H. I'm gonna defend their honor. And you can't say anything else about it. And it's just like, you know, that's what it is. It is what it is. Uh, next next up, we have a backstage thing. Uh, the Golden Truth is getting ready to come out to face uh, the club, Anderson and Gallows. And he said, no, nah, no. Nah. Braun Strowman came in and he destroyed them completely. He, he, he completely ruined the Golden Truth, like, I mean, like, they were decimated. So, after that, of course, Braun Strowman's still looking like a monster, of course, because he said, or else. This is the or else we were talking about. So, we go to Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows in the ring. They're like, okay, the only thing we came here to do was win championships and get money. So, where's the competition so we can earn some money? And who would show up but Enzo and Big Cass? It was a, it was a pretty good match, up and down, uh... Uh, Gallows, um, kind of got the win. Uh, Gallows, Cass was taken out by Gallows. Or, sorry, Gallows was taken out by Cass. Anderson got the win for, uh, for the club, and that was just pretty much it. It was a very, it was a very, um, drawing match. And I, I think it was really boring at this point, because we've seen it so much, so much in the, uh, past, few weeks, like, it's it just, it's gotten boring to me, uh, next, we have the Miz and Maurice, they hosted the Miz TV, as a special guest, Dean Ambrose, and Dean Ambrose doing, like, he does, 
where he basically like, I don't care, I'll do what I want. He comes out and he interrupts them, and everybody's like, oh, okay, cool. And they trade insults, and then the Miz basically goes, you know what, I don't even know why you're a champion. You don't look like a champion. You're nothing like a champion, this, that, and the other. And Dean Ambrose is like, you know what, that's, that, that's a bunch of bull because there's nothing that you can say that makes me internet of a champion because I have the title. I, I um, exude what a champion is supposed to exude. I have all of the uh, heart and soul of a champion, and you can't take that away from me. And then after they changed uh, words some more, uh, Dean Ambrose finally he attacked the men. I like that. I like that little thing where like Maurice threw the mic at uh, Dean, and he kind of like he like cringed because it was like the initial like I guess shock of getting hit with the mic, but then he was like, "What the what the hell? What what was that?" So then they get the escape, and uh, Dean Ambrose is just standing tall over both of them. Next we have cruiserweight action, which was which was pretty good. Uh, T.J. Perkins defeating Jack Gallagher, and like I said with the uh, club in the cast match, yes, it was uh, kind of boring because of the same, it was kind of like same old, same old, but I do have to say that I really did enjoy this match because one, I really enjoy watching the crew the weights work, and two, because Neville made a surprise appearance at the ring, at like literally ringside, he, he was sitting on in a chair ringside, and who would join him but a double, the number one contender, who sat next to him, and then Neville decided he wanted to slide his chair down. It, it was it was really funny. And honestly, let's, like, can I also say that I really still don't understand what is the purpose of the banana, why he why he always has a banana every time you see him every week, but I guess that's his character. He, he walks around with a banana. Uh, I think it was really good. I, I do. I enjoyed it so much. Uh... Jack did not defeat Perkins. It was, it, of course, because how they're making it look now, TJ Perkins is kind of like the right-hand man to Neville, and he just kind of, he, he basically, he gets the champion treatment where he picks up the win because he is champion. So it, it, it just happens, you know. Uh, he, he picks up the win, though, after he hit the detonation kick. I thought that was thought that was good. He's still, he's still using it. And that move really, it, it's a really good move. It's really, as they would say, it's a protected move because I haven't seen him hit it and not win a match in the last three, three months that he's used it. But we'll keep moving. Next, we, women, we have a women's match, the Fatal 4-Way number one contenders match. Boy, Raw is really enjoying these Fatal 4-Ways with the women, they like they love doing that. It's like y'all can't keep the y'all can't do anything besides Fatal Four Way. But I get it. But it was the Fatal Four Way: Alexa versus Sasha versus Nia versus Mickey James. Alexa and Mickey having their official Raw uh, debut. So it was it was it was pretty. It was a good match. The match didn't go too incredibly long, but it was still a really good match. Um, Alexa got the win after Nia. Samoa dropped Sasha, and Alexa drop kicked her out of the ring. And really, my biggest problem with this, and you, I'll, I'll actually come back to this later, is the fact that it's like, okay, she was the top, she was one of the top, if not the top, woman on SmackDown, and then they're just gonna take her over to Raw, and it's like, oh, immediately she gets pushed to the top of the, uh, she gets pushed to the top of the. Division and it's like no, like let her earn her way up like she did with SmackDown. Like she actually made her way up in SmackDown. Don't just let her just get there just because. But I can't really say too much after that. It was a solid match. Uh, Finn Balor versus Kurt Hawkins. Kurt Hawkins came out with the whole attitude of, oh yeah, a uh, Big Show came out and punched me in the face, and now he's in the main event. He got in the main event because I'm such a great guy. And because of this, this, that, and the other, and I was okay. That all right. I like the confidence in it, but it was it was kind of stupid. Uh, Finn Balor comes out because he he challenged. He basically challenged like anybody wants to come out, and you face me. That'll be it. So Finn Balor came out, and uh, yeah, that literally it was all of like two minutes, if even that, for the match, and that was it. Finn Balor won after hitting a coup de gras. Of course, he he wasn't about to lose, but either way. Um, Jeff Hardy, the Hardy, the Hardy Boys had a thing with uh, Tadar Sheamus backstage 
uh, Tadaro was like, oh, it's going to be a dream match, and this, that, and the other, because they have a one-on-one match coming up. Uh, Sheamus kind of like, oh, no, we just, I, I want the title. Forget having the, uh, forget having all these dream matches. Let's just have a freaking, I just want the title. And some people are like, okay, that's cool, because you still got that dynamic of Sheamus is all about the business. Sadaro is more in the passion side, so it is really fun. I, like I, I enjoyed that. Uh, so the mat, so the match, the match was really good. I thought it was a really, uh, I, I thought it was a really good match. Um, of course, Jeff Jeff did get the win, I, even though it would have been interesting to see uh, Sadaro pick up the win. We still we saw Jeff get the win, and afterward, the four of them, all four of them, Matt, Jeff, Sadaro, Sheamus, they shook hands afterward. But the interesting part of this is that Matt Hardy is continually uh, hinting at his broken gimmick. He's he's continually hinting that oh you know we are we it's going to be amazing and fantastic and this that, and the other and like he he I think he said wonderful like he usually does and like he uses the accent a little bit and during the match he even he even called Jeff brother Nero or. Nero, he he said it, so it's there. It's just you got it. You got to move with it. Uh, Strowman backstage, he has Kalisto, and everybody was like, "Oh my God, is he about to like kill Kalisto?" Like he he's drag, he's literally dragging him down the hall, and and what everybody is saying is the most symbolic gesture. He picks him up, puts him in the trash can, and that's it. Like he throws him away. He said, "Roman Reigns is trash, and now you are too." And like he he throws him. He throws him into the uh, trash can, and like he's going to walk away, and the big show comes in and like slams him into the. Well, he just like runs into him and like pushes him into the uh, bar, not the barricade, the uh, the steel like the door steel thing that worked. And it was so crazy because you, Braun got hit, and he was like sitting there looking up, and he wasn't even looking like he was hurt. He was looking like, "Why did you do that? Who do you think you are?" And so Big Show was like, you think you can handle this? You think you can do whatever, whatever? So they get a match because that's what happens. Because Braun Strowman wanted competition. Now he has competition. Uh, so the match itself. And I've, I've heard a couple of people who were just like, oh, my God, you shouldn't have done that because it's, it's, they've done it before. They've done it two or three weeks ago. I was like, no, no, let it happen because this was really great. Like, this was this was a really great match again, and it was it was one of those matches where <clears throat> it was like Braun Strowman was instead of being able to say, "Oh, I'm the big guy. I can do. I can dominate over everybody because I'm so big." No, it was I'm gonna do some technical wrestling. I'm gonna kip up. I'm gonna drop kick. I'm gonna suplex. Like it was a really like it was a really technical match for it to be two of the biggest guys in the company right now, and. uh the match ended, which it was teased like two or three times during the match. It was teased, it was. And it finally happened at the end of the match. Uh, Braun Strowman suplexed Big Show off of the turnbuckle, slam, and the entire ring collapses. And it was, it was really good. It was a hilarious moment when the ref, like he was holding on to the rope, like he was, he was holding on to the rope like he kind of knew what was about to happen. And as soon as the ring collapsed, like he just like, flew out of the ring, it was so tragic, like he, the way he just flew out of the ring, and it, it hit the, he hit the ground, and he was, he was pretty much out cold after that, and both guys are laying there, and then Braun Strowman eventually, he gets up after like a minute and a half, and like he, he gets up and stands there, he does the, like he's just like flexing, and like, that's whatever, like he's so like hyped, and it's like, oh my god, this man is really an inhuman, what is going on? Fix it. Somebody needs to fix this because he should not be able to just stand up and keep it moving like that. So, some people said it was uh, no. Some people said that it was uh, no contest. Some people said it was uh, Braun Strowman won by a technical KO, but we don't know. I don't know. I I don't know. I'm gonna say I'm gonna agree with the people who said that Strowman won by KO because he was able to get up under his own power. Big Show wasn't. So we'll see. Uh, all right, let's, let's get into SmackDown. The show opened up with Charlotte Flair coming out to the ring, and as Naomi said it, which I will also, uh, say it again, 
uh, later, she she uh, comes out. And she basically begs. She she begs to have a, a title match, and it was really like, okay, cool. You you were a champion and on Raw, but you just come straight to SmackDown and you get a championship opportunity. And she beat uh, and she ends up beating uh Naomi for the. She ends up beating Naomi. Uh, for a number one contender spot, and it's like that's that's so dead because you have all these other people who are like, okay, yeah, I want to actually like be a part. Like you have all of these other people who should be pushed to, uh, should be pushed to the main to the title picture, but it's like she just gets it just because she's Charlotte Flair, and I know they're like, oh, you know, it's the land of opportunity. He earned she earned that opportunity, but she really did it. Like. She really didn't earn that opportunity, but it's whatever. Uh, Natalia, Carmella, and who was that? Uh, Tamina. They all they all kind of have like this conspiracy thing. I feel like there's going to be something next week in their title match where like they end up uh, they end up like interfering in the match and costing Charlotte the match, which would in turn probably make them have to go into something later because they end up having to like. They end up having to have a rematch because of the way it was, but we don't know. I don't know. It's possibly. I'm not excited for their match, and I really skipped over it because I just I hated the promo that she that she cut. Like the the promo that Charlotte cut was so robotic, and you know people joke about John Cena being robotic. Charlotte, that was the most bland, boring, weakest promo I have heard in a long. Time like it was worse than people are claiming that Roman Reigns does. It was worse than that, and some people will def- say that Roman is the worst promo cutter. Roman Reigns has cut better promo than that. Oh my God, it was tragic, but it's whatever, I guess. Uh, the first match of the night, however, is the six pack challenge with Jinder Mahal, Sami Zayn, Dolph Ziggler, Eric Rowan, Luke Harper, and Mojo Rawley. Now, going into this match, honestly, I believed it was going to be Mojo Rawley. Simply because he won the Andre the Giant Battle Memorial. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Jesus, I, that is such a long ass name for a match. But uh, he won it, and I just thought that they were going to be like, oh, yeah, we're going to fix our wrongs from the past couple of years, and we're going to have her, we're going to have uh, Mojo actually get pushed and like earn shots at things. Because of it, but it's not. Uh, gender, it was a good match. I'm not going to spoil who won yet. It was a really good match. Uh, it was a lot of good big spots all over. People have did a lot of uh, crazy stuff. Luke Harper flew around the ring like nobody's business. Eric Rowan looked strong. AF. I, I can't wait to see what Eric Rowan goes into later into the year. But uh, Jinder Mahal actually won. Due to an interference by the Bollywood boys, they uh, distracted Sami Zayn long enough for him to get his finisher, which I really don't know what it's called, or some kind of uh, weird variation on like the Coquina Clutch Slam type thing. It was, it was, uh, it was really weird, but I I enjoyed it. I did. I thought it was a really good uh, ending. Uh, uh, Cobra Clutch. I don't know why I said Coquina. Cobra Clutch Slam, and he pinned Sami Zayn. It was a really good. It was a, it was a good thing. Uh, and then I later found out it's because WWE they have uh, they went into business with India. They have a new deal where they're gonna have a guy over there who's in charge of uh, who is in charge of uh, marketing, sales, house shows, all of that. And so I guess they're kind of trying to give him some pushing time, some time to, like, get TV time so that way it looks good for them. But I honestly enjoy it. I feel like story-wise, story, story wise, we all basically know that Bray Wyatt's not going to win the House of Horrors match. We basically all know that. I think that with Jinder Mahal, he can not only give a good heel persona, but he would give a very good insight as to what the future of WWE really is. And I think that's great. Uh, after the match, Randy Orton comes out to congratulate him, and then he basically just goes into, like, he lays into Bray Wyatt with 
Jinder Mahal just kind of standing there like, well, what do I do? I really would have appreciated if uh, Jinder would have hit, it would have hit Randy Orton with the Cobra Clutch slam after the fact. Like, because he like completely turned his back from him and was like, oh yeah, if I want to hit you with the RKO, I will, but I'm not focused on you right now. I'm focused on this House of Horrors match, which is okay, but you know, you got to you gotta do better, especially if you're trying to make it seem like a legitimate match. I think that if you want to make it look like a legitimate match, you cannot have the champion just completely snub the number one contender like that. But it's whatever. Uh, I, I've already done the Charlotte Flair and Naomi match. I'm not going back to that at all because I just thought it was tragic. Uh, she, Charlotte won. That's all you need to know. They're going to have a title shot. They're going to have a title match next week. That's all you need to know. Uh, the Shining, Next, we have a tag team match. Not the Shining Star, but the Cologne. They, they dropped the Shining Star gimmick. They're now going to be uh, using the gimmick where they are the descendants of the Cologne family. And I believe that is really good. It gives way to a lot of things going forward. And it also gives way to bring back people such as Carlito. So I think it, it works. Uh, they, they faced American Alpha because last week, if you guys remember, after their match, after they lost their championship rematch... Uh, the Colognes, at the time, the Shining Stars, put the beat down on them, and they beat them, and that was it. So this week, it was a good match. I think it was a good match. Uh, the Colognes doing what they do best. They're being sneaky, bad guys, and they uh, kick Jason in the face behind the referee's back, and they were able to get the sunset flip, which inevitably caused the pin and the win. Uh, next, we come into the face of America, United States Championship Open Challenge by Kevin Owen. I think this is really good because not only is he using it to further the point that he's the face of America, he's in a way making fun of he's in a way making fun of John Cena for his open challenge. I think that was really cool. But he faces off against uh, Gary Gandy, the hometown hero, who he received like a he he received a Big ovation from the crowd, but it just wasn't meant to be. As Kevin Owens put him away in like thirty seconds or less, it, it was a it was a up down match, and then Kevin Owens decided he's gonna stay for the main event, which is AJ Styles versus Baron Corbin. Uh, it was a good match. Baron Corbin, of course, still looked strong. He continued to look strong even though he lost the match. He lost the match by countout, though. He after uh. Getting knocked into the crowd, Styles was able to jump back and jump back into the ring at like the count of nine and was able to win the match uh, by count out. And it wasn't a bad match at all. And it, it makes both of them look strong because now, even though AJ Styles might not beat Kevin Owens or Chris Jericho, whoever happens to win, I'm banking on Kevin Owens at this point, even though he may not beat him. I feel like they could move forward with AJ and Baron Corbin and they would actually be a really good match or a really good program between the two because they're both really good. Like Baron has gotten so good over the past year that I cannot wait until they give him a championship. I really, I, I can't, I can't. He's going to be so great. It's going to be great to watch him do that. But with that being said, we're going to go into who won. Now, this week, honestly, I feel like both shows had a lot to give, but overall, I'm going to say Raw won this week, because though they did not have a lot of, they didn't, they didn't move storylines along very much, and again, we also didn't see the Universal Champion, like, I, I really hate that we can't see the Universal Champion, but either way... Uh, they even though they didn't do a lot about moving along storyline, they had more as far as action and anybody who was cutting a promo, they did really good promo stuff. So I just think it was really good. Oh, before I get into uh, great and all that, I forgot to say, Shinsuke Nakamura and Ty Dillinger, they both got promo time. They did really good, actually. They were both really good promos. I think they were fantastic. It was good. It was a good way to basically be like, oh, yeah, they're still here. Don't forget about these guys because, you know, they're still here. But I, I, I liked it. 
But yeah, back to what I was saying. I think Raw won this week because even though they didn't progress the storyline that much, it was still really good. So even though we didn't get a lot of uh, women's title match storyline, like Bailey was pictured, but she didn't really like show up against Alexa or show up on the ramp or anything. Uh, we had more of the drifter, but like just like last week, he just kind of showed up and nobody really knew what to say. He was just kind of drifting. Literally, he was, as he was saying, Elias Sampson, as he did what he did, is what his name is. He's the drifter. He just drifted around backstage. Nobody knows what he's doing. But I just, I, I really think that this week, Raw won it because they, they, they were good for what they were supposed to be for. What really hurt SmackDown this week was the absolutely dry promo that Charlotte cut. I feel like had it not been for her just absolute terrible robotic promo, she would, SmackDown would have won this week. But due to that, SmackDown did it, and it, it just happened because they they got to do better with Charlotte. They really do. They to, Just to think that her dad was such a great, uh, promo cutter, and she's she's so tragic. And I get it; she's not that deep. She's not that old in the business yet. But you have to you have to get to a point to where you have to at least sound like you want to do better. Uh, the stuff with the all of the matches were good. Honestly, all of the matches themselves were good, but it just lacked. In the excitement, it just lacked in the excitement department, whereas Raw was very exciting from top to bottom. They had a lot of exciting matches, a lot of exciting moments that people wanted to see. But that's how it is. Uh, I guess I'll just see you guys next week. If you guys uh, like this video, give me a thumbs up down below, show your support for me, and... Uh, comment. Let me know how you felt about this week's show. I think that they were really good. I think they were really good, but you could, you know, Raw got it. Raw uh, with a final score of 93. SmackDown with a final score of 88. That's just what happened. Uh, yeah, but like I said, comment. Let me know how you feel about this week's episode. Uh, like, and also share because sharing is truly caring. And subscribe to me because if you haven't already subscribed to me, you're just not doing life correctly. But with that being said, I'll see you guys later. Holla at your boy. Peace.